Today, let's look at using Copilot with Outlook 365. Now, let's be honest, right? We all spend way too much time in email. And so as part of M365 Copilot, one of the additions to that is you get Copilot in Outlook. And this Outlook agent then has the ability to not only take action inside your inbox, but also kind of understands the broader context of what's going on. So what I want to do today is just show you three examples of ways that I've been using it. I know I teach a lot of classes on this stuff and I feel like I don't see people getting to these use cases. I, they're a little bit, you know, think just a little bit further. So I'm going to walk you through those. That sounds like fun. Then let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Let's just start with the one that I don't think people do enough of. So I don't know about you, but I get a lot of spam. I get a lot of spam that is truly, you know, spam going to make me super rich, fake stuff. And I get spam that is like quasi real. So being a YouTuber, there's always people that are hitting me up to say, hey, promote my product for this or do that. And so I don't ever do that. As you guys know, like I don't do paid promotions on here, but sometimes I'm like just kind of curious about the company. So one of the ways that I like to use this is to have the Outlook Assistant help me better understand, like, is this like totally fake or just one of these annoying, you know, sales pitches? And also if you're thinking, well, that's not me, I don't have to worry about that stuff. That's fair, but I've also used this to analyze incoming leads, right? So we get hundreds, thousands, I don't know, lots of leads here at Power Apps 911 all the time. And so sometimes I want to know more about their company or things like that. So all of this is really easy to do right here from the interface. So here I've got the email that I got yesterday that made me think of, hey, I should show you guys this. And so we know that we can do the little summary by Copilot. And so then this will kind of break down and be like, ah, you know, what do I know about this particular email? Which is really just rereading it to me, which can be helpful in longer threads, but I don't need that. I want to like go deeper. So I'm going to say ask in Copilot. This causes the Copilot to load up over on the right hand side. And so then now I have the ability to chat about my inbox, my calendar, or specific emails like this. So I could ask something like, what do you know about the company that sent me this email? And so we'll hit enter. And so it's going to do two things. One is it's going to look through all of my M365 data. So it's going to look at my Outlook, my messages, my SharePoint data, my OneDrive data. It's getting a full picture of anything we might know about this company. Secondly, it's going to then supplement that knowledge with web search, right? Because you're going to find there's like, we don't really know anything about these people. Right? They spammed us out of the blue, but so it goes out there and it's going to look for their public website. So let's look at what it's coming back with. And so here, right, it's kind of hard, kind of blurring out their name. And I'm going to put them on blast or anything because, you know, they're nice people. But so it's like, hey, here's information about their company is in the first section. And the little one there is its way of saying, hey, I went out to the web and got that. And we'll show you the link down to that below. Then you're going to see there's more information from the web. So that's that whole second paragraph as well. We scroll down further. The two and the three, it's like, hey, here's information that I pulled from the email thread of all the emails that this particular person has sent you. And then below that, it turns out that someone else from this company has emailed me in the past. And so all of the information about that is coming from old emails, right? So, so it got information from the web and then two different email chains. And if there was data about them, like I said, in SharePoint or something, that would have pulled forward. Also, if we scroll down a little bit, so here you can see like all the different pieces. And so if we expand, we can then look at the actual URLs that it pulled the data back from. So all of that is a way to, you know, get information. And so I use this for these types of things, like where I'm like, hey, is this spam? Is this not? Like I got added to like this social influencer thing the other day. And I'm like, is this some spike trying to steal my identity or not? And so we had a chat about, it turned out they were legit, very large, very known website. And I thought that was kind of cool. That, like I was able to use the tool quickly to figure that out. This one has also been handy. Uh, we get a lot of job applicants here at Power Apps 911. And so I can use uh, this greater context. And I get found one of our applicants that she had interacted with us via our training program in a Teams chat for a live session like three years ago, it found that message from her. And so we can find out, you know, what did she ask three years ago? It didn't really affect the decision at all, but it was neat to see it kind of pulling the whole story. So make sure that you're using the agent this way, right? Like, do you want to know more, right, about that customer email, that, that vendor, that partner, that spam, that maybe spam, you know, all those type of things. Like, because it understands all of your data, you've got a lot of information here. Okay, so second up, is I have a hard time managing my calendar. Like, it's just not a skill I have. I don't know. Like, it's on my calendar. I should be able to follow it, but I don't end up quadruple booked. And I don't realize it's quadruple booked until I get to the actual time slot. Like, it overwhelms me. 
So one of the things I can do is I can actually use the Outlook chat here to ask me things like, do I have any meeting conflicts on Thursday? And so we'll hit enter there. And so now it's going to look at my calendar and it's going to pull in all the information. You're like, well, you could have jumped over and looked at your calendar directly. You're right. But a lot of times, like once you get more familiar with this, I tend to like look at it in larger scopes. So like, hey, what are my meeting challenges for the next week and things like that? But I thought we'd just make this one a little bit more straightforward. And so here you can see, yes, you have several meeting ones. And basically my whole day overlaps two to three times because I'm teaching an all day co-pilot class. Like you guys should come join that. You want to learn more about how to use this tool and other Microsoft AIs? I'm teaching a class Thursday and got another one in a couple of weeks after that. So please come join. But anyway, so here are all the different conflicts. And then it's like, all right, look, it looks like the co-pilot jumpstart meeting is causing most of the conflicts. You might want to consider re um, rescheduling some of this stuff. So it, it's exactly right. And so it understands my calendar. It understands the concept of conflicts. It can help me move things. It can help me adjust things. Um, you know, it has a lot of insight there. I will often even ask you, okay, which one of these should I prioritize? Like I always decide for myself, but it's fun to see it, try to figure that out. Like understand, like get to get the logic, like, all right, this meeting's with 800 people and you're just sitting there and this one, you're a presenter. You should probably be the one you're the presenter, right? Like, it does a pretty uh, interesting job with that, uh, you know, type of thing. And once I've kind of found like, so for example, the Ninja team meeting with uh, me and Daniel and Juan, I want to get some help rescheduling that. So, all right, so I've never tried this one. I'm going to try this. All right. Can you find time for me to reschedule the Ninja team? The Ninja team meeting, easy for me to say, uh, that all of, are free, right? Because uh, that should be me, Daniel and Juan, right? We're the ninjas. And so you can see that it's like, all right, well, here's what I got. So let's click on open event form, see what happens. Okay. So it tried to work as Ninja team as an object that did not work. All right. So let's X out of there. And instead then let's try, can you find 30 minutes uh, for me, Daniel and Juan to meet that we're all available. And I use Daniel LeMay's full name because there's multiple Daniels. So I want to make sure I don't get confusion there. So let's try that prompt, see what we get out of that. Oh, I accidentally closed it, so let's just do it again. Sorry, can you find us another time, please? We'll hit enter there. All right, so there you go, right? So it's like, hey, I can set all this up, and then we could either hit send and just whoosh, send it off, or we could hit edit, and then of course, jump into the regular calendar view. Now, one of the things that you might be thinking is, oh, Shane, I could just go click on the meeting myself and edit it and do it like I've always done. You're right. But one of the ways to get familiar and learn new tools better, faster, is to start to use them to do things you already know how to do. So by getting used to trying to do this via chat, finding the things, like I can't say reschedule the team, the Ninja team meeting in chat, right? Like finding those little things, like these are the things that are gonna make you better at AI faster. So by doing something that yes, you know how to do, but doing it by a different mechanism, a new tool, that's how you learn that new tool the fastest. So that's why I do things like this, that yeah, there's better ways today to do it, but as you get more used to it. Also remember everything I'm doing over here in this chat, I could have been doing from the M365 Copilot chat because it has the same access to my calendar, my Outlook, all of that. So I could have been having that same conversation over there. And so maybe that was faster than context switching, opening up Outlook and doing it. So anyway, I want you guys to keep doing this and keep practicing. Okay, so the third one I got for you, let's switch back to my inbox. And so this last one is responding to emails. Okay, I have been known for as long as there's been emails, the thing is being really short to the point with emails. Like I'm not trying to be mean or rude. I just, I don't like to add a bunch of fluffiness at the top or the bottom. Like, you know, who cares? No one reads it anyway. So I'm usually really direct. So Chewy sent me this email yesterday. And so I can hit reply. And if we went and read the email in here, like you would see that, you know, he gave a bunch of reports and basically the giant doghouse project is behind. And so that kind of makes me annoyed. Now I could use Copilot to write me a response, but that's not my style, right? It would just go back up here and we might just, you know, hit the little thing here and just be like, hey, send me one of these. No, right? So typically what's happening is I'll come here and I'm going to write some type of response like, Chewy, what is going on with the doghouse project? I can hear my anger. Is it a way, it's way over budget and now you're telling me it's also behind schedule. Ugh. So tell me what we're going to do but fix that before the end of the day or dot, 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 right? Like it might be a little more extreme than I would be, but you get the idea. I tend to write direct emails, which I have a business purpose there. I just didn't say it in the nicest way. 
So one of the things I could do, highlight all this, hit my little friend, open copilot. And so I could say, hey, I want you to auto rewrite this thing. Or I want to get some coaching, make it shorter, make it longer. Or maybe it'd be nicer if I turn it into a poem. I, know, I don't think so, right? So I could use that method. The other thing I often will do is up here, right? This was here first. So this is where my head often goes to. But I can go here and say copilot coaching this way as well. And so now it's going to reread Chewy's email. It's going to read mine. And it's going to be like, hey, you could be more professional. So, all right, like, all right, that's probably fair. I could be a little bit more constructive, you know. Uh, please let me know how I can assist in resolving this. I don't want to help Chewy. I want him to get the job done. And then be more clear with my suggestions, right? Clarify the consequences, okay? So these all seem good. So what we're going to do is we're going to say apply all suggestions. Now, when we do that, it's going to rewrite this. And you can see here, like, Chewy, could you please update me on the doghouse project? It is currently over budget by amount. So in the email thread, it did not say how much it was over. Like, that was new information that I was adding in that was not in Chewy's update. Right? Like, the budget of 500000 was there, but not how much he was over. So it's trying to get me to add these pieces of information. And then can we discuss how to address the issue and find a solution? I need a detailed action plan. Let me know how I can assist. Great. So we'll hit replace. And then I can just come up here and fill in the blanks, right? So we're over by $500. That's probably not a lot on a $500,000 project, but, you know, I like to save my money. And behind schedule by two weeks. And so then, you know, maybe I'll throw in my signature again. Boom, Shane. And so then now... I've got a better email to Chewy so we could fire this off. Ways that I typically am using this, right? One is to, yeah, de shanify things, like calm them down, which, you know, as I've gotten older, I'm better at, but I still, you know, coaching helps there. Two, like, you ever been angry at a vendor, a customer, you know, the airlines, like whoever, and you want to send an email? <laughs> I have. So when I write those emails, I write them in full anger, venom, you know, non-productive rant. And then I'm using Copilot to come in here and be like, all right, let's soften this up. Let's make it a little bit better. Let's ask for an actual outcome. Like, and, and I'm getting great results. So that's the way that I'm using it. Like, I'm not using it to write my emails too often. Um, you know, I'm not using the auto draft stuff, but I like to use it just to help me be nicer, more friendly. So can you believe a guy like me, I, I, my emails aren't very polite? That's a terrible thing. It's not true. It is. That's enough for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this look at three different ways that I am using the Outlook client or the Copilot and Outlook client. And remember, like, you know, if learning how to use M365 Copilot or a Power Platform Copilot or a Copilot Studio, AI Builder, AI Prompts, all those things are on your to-do list for this year. You know, I've got on-demand training. I got a live training. I got a live training in like two days. Um, but we run those like once every six weeks or so. So definitely sign up. Those have been very popular this year. So come join me for that. Or if you've just got ideas of other little quick hitter videos like this you'd like to see, leave them below. I'm always up for ideas. All right. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.